Hello and wel- welcome back to episode of Explosions and Fire! Yeah. <laughs> so today we're looking at some real retro chemistry and we're trying to make an explosive called Fulminating Platinum from 1817 published by Mr. Davy. Now you're probably thinking, 1800s, Davy, I totally know that guy. That's Sir Humphrey Davy. He's the guy that invented seven elements and also identified two halogens. And he also invented the entire fields of electrochemistry and taught Faraday everything he knew, which went on to teach Maxwell everything he knew. It's that guy. Well, you'd be wrong. And that's not who we're talking about. We're talking about Edmund Davy, who is Sir Humphrey Davy's cousin. And instead of wasting his life with discovering elements and that sort of thing, he invents acetylene and bloody the world's most expensive explosive. Some people get into chemistry just to, you know, help society and benefit mankind. Some people get into chemistry just to fucking set fire to things and fucking blow stuff up. You're my hero, mate. Inspiration. All right, let's get to this 1817 paper. It is 201 years old, so the language is a little bit out of date. So what we're trying to make is fulminating platinum. It's described as an explosive brown powder. When the fulminating powder in small quantity is placed on filtering paper and gradually heated over a clear fire, it explodes with a loud report. The paper is lacerated and its parts violently rent asunder. As, as, asunder. Fuck. A bit of the powder, no bigger than the head of a pin, produces a sharp crack and makes a hole in the paper. So the explosive is powerful and able to detonate in tiny amounts. That's my kind of shit. There's a bit of the start of the paper which is all like, oh, we're gonna get pure platinum and we're gonna like re-dissolve it and then precipitate it out and blah, 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 blah. And it ends up dissolving in nitromuriatic acid anyway, which forms hexachloroplatonic acid. Nitromuriatic acid is just aqua regia. Instead of doing all that shit, I just went on Alibaba and bought <laughs> the hexachloroplatonic acid. Imagine what Edmund Davy could have achieved if he had access to Alibaba, right? I, that keeps me up at night, honestly, that kind of question. A current of sulfuretted hydrone gas was then passed through the aqueous solution to the superdated fluid remained colourless. All right, so we're talking about hydrogen sulfide here. I, I, pretty much, that's a reasonable assumption. So I generated hydrogen sulfide by a reaction of sodium sulfide with an acid, that's uh, some self-made sodium sulfide, this reaction is pretty slow, so when I ended up having to repeat this a couple of times, as we'll find out later, I just ended up adding the sodium sulfide directly to the hexachloroplatonic acid, and that seemed to precipitate out the desired insoluble platinum sulfide anyway, so that seemed to speed things up considerably. All right, so we got platinum sulfide, that was pretty easy. All right, the next step is a little bit more interesting. The hydrosulfuret of platinum, after being well washed and partially dried, was converted into sulfate by the agency of nitrous acid. Now, nitrous acid is a real thing in chemistry at the moment, but it's, yeah, it's an unstable compound that's like the reactive species in a diazonation. Uh, that reaction, the diazonation, wasn't actually discovered until 50 years after this. So I don't think the nitrous acid that he is referring to is the same nitrous acid that we would refer to. So my theory was that the term nitrous acid is actually referring to red fuming nitric acid, where like the nitrous bit is referring to the red nitric oxides. I was like, hey, well, how the fuck is this gonna work anyway? Like, I can't see this working. But amazingly, we see a violent reaction that gives off a lot of fumes and the platinum is brought into solution. If we take a step back from the ship posting for just one second, it's actually quite a nice to appreciate how neat the chemistry is, really. What we need to do to get this explosive platinum complex is we need to coordinate ammonia to the, uh, the platinum, but we can't do that when there's any chlorine around. Well, that's my theory anyway. It's not really an easy thing to do to like kick off the chlorines around hexachloroplatonic acid, but Edmund Davy here has managed to do it in two steps, right? We precipitated it out as a sulfide, and then we brought it back in solution as, well, theoretically, a sulfate so some pretty super slick chemistry it's, it's quite nice oh mate I'm going to build you a shrine back at it treating the aqueous solution of sulfate with ammonia all right so we I do that and then get a very very small amount of precipitate and I couldn't work out for the life of me I was doing this for a couple of weeks and like fuck, why is a precipitate so small and then I finally buddy I'm a bit of an idiot but it also wasn't really mentioned in the paper, is the fact that this product is amphoteric. So the solution still has to be acidic, and you add a certain amount of ammonia, and the stuff precipitates out. But if you add too much ammonia, then the whole thing resolves. It's worthwhile to mention, I have no idea what's going on with the chemistry at this point. It's a white complex, a white platinum complex, which is very strange. I just assume it's an ammonia coordinated to the platinum, but why is it white? 
precipitate thus obtained was partially dried. It was then put into a flask with a strong solution of pure potash. Potash is an old term for potassium carbonate, right? So I know that term. The problem is I don't fucking have any, so. Um, later on though, it does say, maybe here are marked. Other alkaline substances such as soda, common kali, and C may be substituted for pure potash. All right, common kali is potassium hydroxide. Maybe common kali, what a shit term. Soda, I'm fairly sure is sodium carbonate. I have a loss of sodium carbonate, so we're gonna use that one. So I added a strong solution of that to the ammonium platinum complex. And that gives off a lot of ammonia gas. The next step is the fluid boiled nearly to dryness. Oh good, the old boil the fucking super sensitive, super powerful explosives until it's nearly dry. Ah, oh, you cheeky bugger, you're trying to kill me, aren't you? You're trying to kill me, you sly dog. Uh, we do that for quite a while, and we're meant to end up with some solid matter, but I bloody didn't end up with anything. I bloody did all this, and no, no solids came out of it. Just a weird, kind of nearly brown solution. Scanning the rest of the text for any clues on what to change and what to improve, we get this sentence. In making fulminating platinum, circumstances may be varied to a considerable extent without materially impairing its properties, which is just a fucking kick in the teeth, all right? Edmund, we don't fucking need that attitude. Mate, I fucking built you a shrine. Is there another way we can make this fulminating platinum? Well, I found a weird reference by someone called Daniels that involved dissolving platinum oxide in sulfuric acid and then adding ammonia to that. So I spent quite a while converting the rest of my chloroprotonic acid into platinum oxide in a molten mass of potassium nitrate, which smashed some glassware and took quite a while. And all that to find out that platinum oxide doesn't actually dissolve in sulfuric acid. So Daniel is a filthy scumbag liar and um, I will hold him accountable for every mistake from now on. Platinum oxide seemed to slightly dissolve in very concentrated sulfuric acid, well, fully concentrated sulfuric acid, after like extended heating and three weeks of sitting there. And if we add concentrated ammonia to that fully concentrated sulfuric acid, which is a terrible idea, we don't actually get the fulminating platinum, which is a big disappointment. We just get that weird white complex back again. Thanks, Daniels. At this point, we're so close. I can bloody feel it. We're so close. We've got the white solid. We just got to convert it into the black powder at the end. We're so close. So I go back to Davey. I say, sorry, man, that I fucking slagged you off before. So I fucking scale up the procedure. I make heaps of that white complex. I dry it. I purify it. Then I boil it for five days in the bloody sodium carbonate solution. And it, it takes so much time. I have to refill the water bath all the time. And then I, at the end of it, though, we get some brown suspension and it bloody it looks good and Oh, just work, you fucking mongrel thing. Of course it fucking is not explosive. At the end of the day, sometimes you just got to admit defeat. Some explosives, they're just too good to be made by, like, mere mortals, like me or you. We, we just can't make them. They can only be made by fucking God amongst men, like... Edmund Davy. So, I'm not even mad that this explosive got lost to time. What chance did I have? I love you. I'd like to thank all the support of my Patreons, that a lot of people came on board over the months, even though I wasn't posting content, and that, that really encouraged me to keep going with this project, so thanks a lot for that. I have a Discord server, it's a lot of fun, it's quite active, uh, and if you like shit posting, you like chemistry, and you like shit posting about chemistry, then, you know, this is a, they're a really great community there. And, um, yes, I've got a buddy make up some explosions in the next video. Oh man, I feel like I owe you guys some explosions. I owe myself some explosions, let's be real. <sighs> Food.